Philosophy is the subject which studies man's relationship to reality. That's a capsule definition. And it consists of five branches, which I will put on the board and briefly define. <clears throat> There's a definite structure here for a reason. Metaphysics is the branch which studies the nature of the universe as a whole. What is real? How does reality operate? Are there two realities, etc.? Epistemology theory of knowledge. How do you know you know? What qualifies as knowledge? What test does an idea have to go through to be able to say, I do know it? Can you ever really know? Can you be certain? All questions of knowledge is epistemology. These two together give rise to the central, not the basic. These are the basic branches of philosophy, but the central branch is ethics or morality, approximately synonyms. That's the branch which provides a code of values to guide human choices and action. How should you live? What should be the goal in life? What is right? What is wrong? And then in turn out of there comes two derivative branches. One is politics, which is the branch which studies the nature of society and the proper role of government. And I don't think you need an example of that right now. And then coming off in another direction is aesthetics, about which you're going to say only a sentence or so in this brief overview. That is the philosophy of art. What constitutes an artwork? What makes an artwork good or bad? How do you establish the standards? The overall view gives you man's relation to reality, how he knows, how he should live, and therefore how he should govern his most crucial products, government and art. Now, the first thing to see about this subject is that you cannot escape it. You may escape it consciously, but then your subconscious will pick up from the world around you views on all these questions. You may have consistent ideas or contradictory ideas, but this is not like physics or astronomy or even zoology, which you could blessedly live your whole life, never hear about, and never be in any problem as a result of that. All these questions are central to a man living his life, and therefore, in some form or another, perhaps inconsistently, you have a view on all. Take, a, for the sake of an example, from the field of ethics. You want to go into a career. You decide you want to be an MD in private practice. Is that good? Is that bad? Your priest or your mother or your mother-in-law tells you this is very selfish. All you're after is uh, money. Uh, you should really be a missionary like Albert Schweitzer and go to Africa. Or you should work in a storefront clinic. You should be unselfish. You should sacrifice yourself for others. You have some view. You may have an inconsistent view. You may do one and feel guilty <coughs> that you're not doing the other, but you can't escape the question, who is to benefit from your behavior? If you try to escape, to switch the example and say, well, who knows these questions? There are no absolutes. Nobody can be certain of anything. And that applies to more than just ethics. That applies to all knowledge. And that comes under epistemology. And if that's true, how do you establish what you call knowledge, or even whatever ideas you do hold? Do you turn to others? That's one theory of epistemology. Take public polls to find out the truth. But how do the others know what to believe? Do they get it from God? Well, God offers different revelations. Do you go by logic? What is logic? What if somebody says what's logical to you isn't logical to me? Do you agree with that? You have to have some idea, or you couldn't even let an idea into your mind. 
Suppose you say, well, I don't know about all this. 50 million Frenchmen can't be wrong, and I'll follow them. Well, if 50 million Frenchmen can't be wrong, that means there is no reality. Whatever they say, that will determine the nature of reality. Well, is there a reality? If there is, 50 million Frenchmen might be wrong. Isn't that true? And I don't think I have to illustrate politics and aesthetics. Objectivism holds that one way or another, everyone has views on these questions, on the central questions, and that actually shapes your life and character and your, uh, shapes human history. Now let's look briefly at the objectivist, you're motivated now, hopefully, at the objectivist position on, at least the key position on these uh, issues. Now, under metaphysics, the central word would be existence or reality. Objectivism begins with the axiom, existence exists. There is something. What is this something? Nothing esoteric. Everything that you see, everything available to the senses, everything in the heavens down to the contents of this cup of coffee. The sum of that is existence or reality, and that is the axiom on which objectivism begins. What is the basic law of reality? Very simple. The law of identity, formulated first by which philosopher? Aristotle, I thought everybody in this room knew nothing, but that's correct. It's uh, not nothing about anything, but nothing about philosophy. The law of identity says <coughs> A is A. Things are what they are. If you uh, fail an exam, then however unhappy that makes you, you failed. It's a fact. Uh, you might get the teacher to change the grade on paper, but still the performance that warranted the F is still that performance. And this is true of every fact, human or otherwise. So we say reality, it being what it is, is independent of consciousness. Independent of consciousness. Well, what's another word for independent of consciousness? Objective. And thus, if 50 million Frenchmen or any number smaller or greater want something to be true, it is not true simply because they say it's true. You can wish, desire, believe, alone or in combination with the rest of mankind. That leaves reality as such utterly unaffected. It is what it is, A is A, no matter what the content or beliefs of the human mind. Equally, it, it, since it is what it is, it's independent of any other consciousness. And the big candidate, if you don't believe that human consciousness controls reality, is the man upstairs, a supernatural being that controls reality, and that's known as God. Now, for the very same reason that we reject the idea that human beings can, can, can uh, their, the content of their mind can change reality, we say the same about a supernatural being. So in essence, we say this in metaphysics, there is a reality, that reality is this world all around us. We deny subjectivism, that's the idea that the human subject simply by manipulations within its mind can change reality. And we deny supernaturalism, which is the idea that there is some superpower, force, God, whatever, that controls or affects this world. So we are therefore atheists, but also a-gremlinists and a-Santa Clausists. And we're against all forms of the, the supernatural, only the natural. And the natural world operates how? By causal law, by cause and effect, each thing acting in accordance with its nature. There are no miracles. 
no chance in the sense of strictly causeless events, no use praying because there's nobody to pray to, and even if he could hear your prayers and was there, he can't do anything about it because things are what they are and do what they do. Does this mean human beings are subject to cause and effect? Absolutely they are, but we go on to say that one form of cause and effect is human will. The man does have the power of choice, the power of volition, the power to think or not, and that is the first cause in a whole subsequent chain. Now, let's turn to epistemology. So you have a tiny sketch of our view of metaphysics. Epistemology, the key word is reason. Reason. We believe that reason is the only means of knowledge, <clears throat> and thereby we contrast that with mysticism. Mysticism is the view that there is a non-rational, non-sensory means of knowledge. Reason means starting with the senses and then using logic to come to conclusions on its basis. Mysticism means you can dispense with the senses, logic, argumentation. You get a direct, unmediated insight somehow into reality, which could be faith, one form of mysticism, revelation, intuition, ESP, etc., etc. Now, we reject any form of mysticism, obviously, in this brief overview. I can't give you the detailed arguments that I presented in my book, but just a sketch, sort of a table of contents of objectivism. Now, reason has three crucial elements that uh, are central. As I say, to begin with, reason starts with the evidence of the senses. Seeing, hearing, tasting, touching, smelling. We regard those as completely valid, and as the foundation of all other knowledge. Therefore, we reject out of hand every idea from the early Greeks on up that suggests that the senses are invalid, that they give us illusions, that we can't tell the senses from hallucinations, that if they were Martians, they would have different senses from us, etc., etc. All of that is covered in the objectivist literature, uh, but I'm just giving you a blanket viewpoint. On the basis of sensory observation, human beings have the unique capacity to form concepts or abstractions. And Ayn Rand's book, Introduction to Objectivist Epistemology, is entirely devoted to how to form concepts. And she holds that concepts are also objective. In other words, they are not a product of the arbitrary decree of society, and they are not a revelation from God, as, for instance, Plato and his Christian followers later held. Concepts are our way of organizing sensory data, but they are an objective way, and there are definite rules of forming them, and therefore, when you use them properly, you can claim to have objective knowledge. But now, to use them properly, you have to put them together using logic. Logic is the method of reason. Logic, of course, was invented by Aristotle, not by objectivism, but we subscribe entirely to uh, um, Aristotelian logic, the essence of which is you can have your cake and eat it too. Nothing can be A and non-A at the same time and in the same respect. That's the essence of logical thinking to put the data together in a way without contradictions. And why can't you have contradictions? Because we're trying to know reality, and the basic principle of reality is A is A. There is no contradictions uh, in reality. 